Hello, it's James from xrobots.co.uk. This is part 32 of Ultron, the real robot, and it's the second part of controlling Ultron from the motion capture suit. So last time we got the head tracking working, we also got the arm tracking working, and we used the body IMU on that suit to uh, work out that basically when you turn your whole body in space, then uh, it doesn't go and turn the other limbs, so it subtracts that figure, and we got all those things working. But I did make one mistake, I turned all the sensors around so they were all basically level on uh, their orientation, which worked much better for the head. But then I look back in part three where I originally investigated these sensors and these sensors use Euler angles and some very strange things happen. Basically two of the axes stay in space and one stays with a sensor which isn't the same as normal IMUs with their X, Y and Z coordinates. So um, I deliberately built the uh, mechanical arm of Ultron and the test arm back in part three to work with those angles natively. So in fact in part three what I did was uh, had that sensor oriented so it's flat when the arm is out um, so basically I need to move that sensor back on the motion capture suit and this is why you notice I had some trouble actually getting that to work uh, when I was controlling the arm and I had to kind of twist it as well to get the motion I wanted and it wasn't very satisfactory. So what I've done is actually moved the arm sensors so they're flat. I've left the body and the legs and the head so that they're uh, level this way and as I say check out part three to find out why things are so weird. It is quite confusing uh, but this is basically how the robot is designed looking back on it for the sensors to work in this orientation. So you should now find that this uh, keeping the arm straight works much better. So um, now if I move the sensor in this axis, we should find it tries its best to keep that lower arm always pointing forwards because I'm only moving it in one axis, even though that means it's moving the Z axis and the Y axis. So that works pretty well. And if I rotate the sensor, then we just get rotation. We shouldn't get too much of that upper arm rotation. We should just get sh shoulder spin until I actually move it this way. Then we should find that the upper arm rotates as well to try and keep the arm parallel, just like the movement in the sensor here. So I'm pretty happy with that. And that works much better than it did last time. And we're still using that body IMU to compensate for rotation of the whole wearer with all the sensors. So if I uh, carefully pick up the mannequin without manipulating that sensor, we should find that we can move this. And we do get some motion for some reason. There is a little bit of Z creep, probably because I'm waving the magnetometers next to the magnetic field from all the motors in Ultron. But in fact, it's nothing like what we get if we actually just move that sensor to move the arm. So it's actually uh, using that body sensor to compensate so the wearer can move around and the whole robot doesn't think all the limbs are moving. And of course, the head still works just as it did before. And again, that uses the body uh, IMU compensation. So when the whole wearer turns, it doesn't turn its head. The next plan was gonna be making the motion capture suit more wearable. So putting some sensible straps on and reducing some of these wires down and things so I can actually wear it and we can configure up the forearm and the sensors on the thighs. And the aim was that we could use body language from my leg pose and the pose of my left arm to drive the position of the right arm as if it's a prosthetic arm. So that was gonna be quite an interesting part of the project. However, I've still got quite a lot of coding to do on that and a few issues to resolve, mainly with that Z creep, some other bits and pieces. So um, in fact, I don't think I wanna put this on and try and so sort out the code and make the video and all those things while I'm wearing it. Also at exhibitions, it's gonna be quite annoying to wear it. So I think I need another solution. Obviously the mannequin's pretty good, but he's pretty, uh, pretty stiff, even though he's a bendy mannequin and you can bend his arms, he's not very fluid. Um, and he tends to fall over a lot. So I'm actually gonna make another little maquette, another little man with bendy joints so I can puppeteer, probably with sticks on the back of the elbow and everything, so we can put the sensors on and I can do the developments, people can interact with it, and that's an option as well as wearing the motion capture suit so we can see how it responds and how the robot responds. Right, here we are, so I've designed this little guy. He's about two feet tall. His legs are deliberately short because um, he doesn't need any knees. So we've got these parallelogram legs, so I can position the legs front or back or in the middle and he'll still stand up stably. And obviously we'll put a, a one sensor on each leg there. He's also got some sort of uh, hinges here to lean backwards and forwards and left and right. They'll be done up nice and tight with wing nuts for now. But when I come on to do the ab actuators, it'll be quite useful to have those joints. This is gonna be uh, used for ongoing development. The head can obviously move and I've got a little 
little uh, uh, area at the back here to grab it by to move it around to puppeteer it um, and the same with the arms so I've made these ball joints and these are going to be printed in ninja flex and then the uh, sticks and so on are going to be um, in rigid ABS so that hopefully we can get the ball to grip tight enough that it stays where I pose it. Uh, might take some trial and error, but there we go. Um, the arm, of course, will move all around and the forearm can rotate as well. So this will be printed in two halves, just like this, flat on the bed and stuck together so we can get something round that's nice and strong. And we should have enough surface area there to stick all the sensors and the elbow comes back here so I can puppeteer it just like Kermit or one of those puppets. So we've got quite a bit of printing to do, but hopefully it will stand up pretty stable and we can attach all the sensors and get on with the development. Here's one of my Ninja Flex cups on the Lulzbot Mini with a Flexi Struder. It's done an extremely good job of that um, overhang so far. Nothing has fallen down underneath. So even with that 5mm brim, it seems a good orientation to print the part. Well, that appears to be going extremely well indeed, even with that overhang. So um, let's just hope the size is right to grip the ball. Here's half of my head, so that is half of the ball being printed, so we need to do two halves, stick them together, hopefully those will fit in the cup okay. Here are some other bits and pieces of the hips, I think, which I'm just doing in uh, blue ABS. We've got a combination of the grey and blue for this. Yep, we've got a few printers working on this at the same time. Here are some of the parts, I've already plugged the head in there. It is a bit slack, but it'll probably be fine when this is upright. And it fits in there pretty well. The arm I made the ball slightly bigger, so it's a bit more satisfying and it will actually stay where I put it. So I think that's gonna work pretty well. Right, here we are all together. So we've got um, legs that are sort of fixed in this stance, of course, depending on whether the legs are forward or backwards, and of course I can move those around. Um, the robot is going to mirror the left arm in different ways, and I explained this last time, but it'll probably be left um, like this, or like this, so it's got a fairly stable base, I've put it on a non-slip mat here. The head can move around, um, so far I've only implemented this axis and this axis, although we do have this axis as well on the sensor and the robot is capable of moving, so I've left that as a ball joint, and the arm of course, we've already looked at the upper arm there, which can rotate like this, and come out, and also move like this, and then we've now got the lower arm which can move here, and I've got this stick on the back so I can puppeteer it, rotate it, do whatever I want to do with it there. Um, I have implemented these axes as well, which are done up pretty tight, but it can lean like this, and like this, so if we come on to do those ab actuators, we can still use the same model to control it, but otherwise I can puppeteer it, and we should be able to attach the sensors to this and have Ultron do all the same movements. Right, I've attached all the sensors, we've got another one on the side of the head there, and obviously the arms, both legs and the body, so um, this should be pretty good now, and we can see if this can um, control Ultron. Right, so here's first go with my little man, so uh, obviously uh, we've got the same things we had before, so we've got the head there, I haven't got this side to side axis implemented as I say, but I could have, but obviously rotating the head works pretty well, and looking all around. It's much easier than waving a mannequin head in the air anyway. So that works pretty well. And then we've got the axis on the upper arm there. So if I rotate it, it makes Ultron's shoulders uh, rotate. If I go forwards and backwards again, it rotates and the arm tries to stay uh, facing forwards all the time. And also that linear actuator that actually lifts the arm out. So it's scaled down a lot because it's a very powerful actuator and I don't want to overdo it. But I can, of course, raise that up. The other arm is disabled at the moment instead of mirroring. And again, as I move that arm forward and twist it, we should see um, all the other joints responding there. So now we can do this sort of thing, which I'm pretty happy about. We should be able to spin the arm like this as well, a little bit. Whoops, let's just pull that back and put his arm back down. And I have implemented um, a kind of zero switch, so if I think it's losing its Z position because of the magnetic field on any of these, so let's just artificially turn the head there, 
I've got a zero position switch now on my brain, and I can just press it, and it sets everything back to zero. So now this is the new zero, which is obviously wrong, so we need to put that right, so we can at some point sort of zero up all these sensors to make sure they're straight, and press zero, and it puts everything in the middle again. So now let's have a look at that forearm. So after quite a lot of messing around, I've now configured the forearm, and um, in fact you can hear the hand in the background working there. So I've had to uh, do some conjuring with the axis, of course, because if we rotate the whole arm, we don't want the uh, lower arm to rotate, even though it is, so we've had to subtract that. And I've also had to mix some axis together because of this problem with the um, Euler angles, and put the sensor on the front here instead of the side, so that we get a Z here for the forearm and it's not affected by rotation. So again, check out part three to see how these sensors work. Obviously, I've tried to make it as easy as possible by orienting them correctly rather than trying to do complicated maths afterwards. So let's see what we've got. All right, so now we've got that wrist rotation. So we should be able to see Ultron's wrist rotating there. We've got the elbow working. There it is. So if I hold this at the back now, I can uh, puppeteer the wrist. And obviously, everything else works as it did. So um, that's pretty good. We can just bring his arm out there. Let's just turn his hand and have him kind of come down and look at what's in his hand, perhaps. So we can do that sort of thing. Have him look all around, put the arm down, perhaps. Look back at the hand again. So I'm feeling quite a lot like, um, you know, I can almost puppeteer this. Probably need to make his neck sticks a bit shorter because he can't do, look down as much as I'd like, but that's just mechanical. But apart from that, uh, the rest of this um, seems to be working pretty well, and we've still got, obviously, all that rotation there. So, uh, yeah, pretty happy with that on the whole. So now we need to work out what to do with the other arm, and as I said, that's going to be based on the leg positions. I mentioned this last time, but the quick recap is that one of the original aims for the project was to be able to control a prosthetic right arm from the rest of the body language. So essentially what we're going to do is read the leg positions, and if the left leg is leading, then the arms will mirror in this direction as, as if the person is reaching for something. If the right leg is reaching, they'll mirror this way, but also the left and right arm will follow each other. So the right arm, we don't have any sensors on, will follow the left arm and mirror like this. But if the legs are in the middle, They'll also follow, but they'll mirror like this. So we just need to put some logic in to read those leg positions and then map all the um, axes so we get the right arm moving as it's desired. Right, so we've just put a bit of logic in to uh, read those positions and work out whether they're within uh, two degrees of each other, which means that it's in the middle, or whether they're in the left or uh, the left forward is, or the right is forward. So I've just dumped those out to a terminal there. And as we can see at the moment, very much the uh, right leg there is forwards. And if I go and put the left leg forward instead, so let's just uh, adjust the thing there, we should find that the now we've got left forward, and if I put them roughly in the middle within a couple of degrees, I think we've got uh, a two degree shift either way, then it should say they're in the middle. So now we can use that as the logic to define what happens with the right arm. Okay, I've now configured up the right arm, so it tracks the left arm based on the leg position. So now if the left leg is leading as it is now, we get what we had before, essentially, which is some twist in the body there. But I've also made the arms, the elbows, mirror each other, so they do the opposite thing. And the hands, as well, both turn inwards. And uh, the linear actuator there is the same, but essentially if it reaches forward with one hand, the other hand goes back. So there it's leading with its left leg and its left hand. So let's just have him look at what he's doing there. So that works okay. If I lead with the right leg, so let's just switch those over, then we should find that uh, we get almost a mirror, so both of these arms come forward together, but you should see both of the arms now turning to its right and turning to its left this way. There we go. So in fact they're mirrored but tracking each other, and if we put both legs in the middle, and we should find it is in fact a perfect mirror. So now both the arms turn in together and out together, and so on. Now it's my left leg forward again, which is my favorite mode for puppeteering. And the linear actuators always lean outwards, so this is quite a good, uh, good way of showing its range of motion.
Probably need to stiffen up the legs here because it's a bit unstable. But on the whole, the principle pretty much works there. Let's just pop that into full mirror mode. Obviously the head is independent. So he can do quite a few things there. And the flexibility in Ultron's body obviously uh, makes him move a bit more human-like and makes his spine move around as a person would. So on the whole, not too unhappy with that. I think that's pretty organic. It's unfortunate Ultron's not the most dexterous robot with the biggest range of motion. Um, if you can imagine him not having a front or having a chest plate and being able to bring those arms right round and then bring them right out, he'd be able to reach in front of him with the same axis. But unfortunately he's Ultron and he's got these chest panels so he can't do it. So I quite fancy doing a separate robot arm project one day, which basically allows that full range of motion all the way around, a bit more like an industrial robot arm and then see what we can get out of that left to right hand conversion and tracking. But I'm pretty glad I made this little chap. Um, I think he's gonna become a major part of the project. Initially, this was sort of an aside to the project to try and drive a prosthetic arm uh, from body motion. It's something I mentioned in part one. But now I've got my little puppet here. This is uh, another way to make Ultron more interactive, which is the whole aim of the project with the other stuff I've done with the brain, the speech, um, the uh, sensors in all the joints and all those things. So I think this would be quite good for the public to play around with at sci-fi shows and so on, um, so they can actually have a go at puppeteering Ultron. It's also probably possible we could read in different body poses here to affect the emotions, so have a look back on those brain episodes for more information on that. So I'm pretty glad I've done this and I haven't tried to wear the suit. That is still something I'd like to do in the future so I can actually puppeteer Ultron while moving. So that's all I've got time for this week. But don't forget to subscribe for more updates on this project and other projects. And also check out my Patreon campaign at patreon.com slash xrobots where you can get access to some exclusive rewards including a live broadcast with me and all my videos early. And that's of course how most of my projects are funded through Patreon and also with t-shirt sales. Check out my Spreadshirt store, I have a US and European store with an exclusive xrobots t-shirt and other merchandise design that's available till only the end of March. And there'll probably be another design after that if you're watching in the future, so don't forget to check those links out. All right, that's all for now.